con connect a bunch of neurons by these gap junctions into sort of a hyperneuron. You can have a complex of neurons that basically have one inside and one outside. And inside that hyperneuron is where the quantum state can develop fairly quickly because you have enough, enough microtubules, enough tubulin in superposition to reach the threshold quickly. Because you need a fairly large amount to reach it quickly, otherwise it would take a long time. And then you'd have decoherence problems. Plus you want it to happen fairly quickly so you can have the advantage of using it in, in, in real time and, and to, to, to do things that we need to do. I got to back a little bit here. You got the two microtubules. They enter quantum state at the same time. They're communicating with each other. But you're saying you still need a physical thing like an axon dendrite connecting the two neurons. Why? Because I mean, again, if they're communicating with each other, then no. why did they ever need? Why do we need axons and dendrites to as communicate well? the results to the outside world? And con to communicate the outside world. But why do we to need the them? Th state. That's fine. But why do we need them between neurons? Gap junctions. Well, for the quantum state, we need gap junctions. Gap junctions are different are different type of synapse. No, no, I, I agree with you, but or, I mean, I understand that. But uh, but then, why do the neurons between themselves need axons and neurons at all for classical processing? Because not everything the brain does is conscious. In fact, most of okay, what the brain does is so, not conscious. So basically, we've got we've got multi multiple multiple types of computation occurring right, right, right. within the neurons and right. between neurons. We've right. got computational or uh, quantum computations going on. We also have classic computation. Right. And the axons and dendrites are, are are maintaining those, those classical ones. The 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 uh, the microtubules are main are are running the quantum computations. Well the microtubules may be involved in, in a lot of things, but only I mean, consciousness is kind of like the tip of an iceberg, okay? Most of what the brain does is non-conscious. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you anesthetize patients and look at their EEG, there's a lot of electrical activity going on when consciousness isn't there. So most of what the brain does is non-conscious. Uh, then there's the issue of subconscious or pre-conscious. And consciousness is just kind of this, this tip, of, tip of an iceberg. So this prob probably at any one time, there's only, let's say, a million neurons out of 10 billion involved in, that are involved in consciousness. But those particular million might shift around depending on the connections of the gap junctions. Right. So we need the, the synapses uh, and, and axon dendrites classical processing to, number one, bring the environment you know, from our senses into, into the system, and number two, to communicate the results of the quantum computation conscious moments to the outside world. So if we make a conscious decision to do something, the results of that are communicated and we think most of this is happening in the dendrites, to the axon hillock to cause the axon to fire, which mm -hmm. eventually tells our, our muscles to move or f for us to do things. Right. So we need all this classical processing um, to support the, the, the quantum computations that are important for consciousness. So the quantum computations decide what to do, but they still need to, at some point, set off a chain of classical right. reactions right. in order for me to lift my hand in the air. Right, and they also need that same type of classical information to bring the information to it. Right, okay, so that's our, that's our input and our output, right. essentially. Right, exactly. Back to the, the the problem with well, I mean, this is a huge assumption to say that well, it's at a certain point there in the in, you know we reach the fundamental you know layer of the universe and and basically the the cat's dead, the cat's not dead, are two well, different uni two different universes, but on such a fundamental level that that we'll never be able to observe them directly, but the result of them is such that you know that's that's the assumption, right? The assumption is that. Then, then aren't those universes generating our reality? I mean, There's only one universe, okay? The fundamental level is the universe. Yeah, it's way, way down there, but it's everywhere, wherever you go. And basically, uh, Einstein equated uh, mass and curvature in space-time. So that a mass causes curvature in space-time, and you can also look at it the other way around. The curvature is mass in space-time. So really, space-time geometry, the, at this fundam fundamental level, is all there is. And spin, mass, charge consciousness, everything derives from that. Mm -hmm. So an atom is, you know, you could think of it as, as just a dense curvature of space-time geometry. Mm -hmm. And at that fundamental level, okay, mass is one output of it, but also embedded at that level is information. For example, uh, the proto-conscious experience that philosophers call qualia, maybe things like redness or, or sadness or, you know, very simple. It's kind of like, you know, a painter fundamental colors on okay. it, okay? And he or she takes a brush and picks a little of that and puts it here, a little of that, puts it there, and makes the Mona Lisa, okay, right. from these fundamental components. The fundamental components of our conscious experience, 
qualia, if you will, or proto-conscious qualia, are embedded at the fundamental level of the universe at the Planck scale. Someone could argue that you could separate the color uh, purple into red and blue, even though the color purple is on that palette and it looks fundamental to us. If you know we were, uh, you know, the size of, of an atom in that paint, right. we would say, "Hey, there's some. I'm red and you're blue." But okay, well, together maybe we make have... purple up out there, but yeah. in here, you know, we're different. Well, I mean, maybe you only have red blue there, and, and the rest is done at, at a higher level, or maybe it's even more fundamental than that. Maybe re maybe color isn't even a good example because it's a specific wavelength of light. Mm -hmm. But something that makes up our experience is down at that level. When you put it all together, together gives us this, you know, feelings, qualia, if you will. When you put it all together gives us the, the complex experience that we have. So our conscious experience, each frame, 40 times a second, is kind of like the Mona Lisa. Of course, it's changing due to the inputs and due to our, our conscious processes, quantum computations and microtubules, if we're correct, selecting particular sets of qualia at this fundamental level. So basically, consciousness... Wait, then we're the painter. I mean, we're the one at 40, very, very fast, well, who's we? almost blur, blurry. I mean, me, for instance. It's a, but I'm you, the one picking the colors and making the Mona Lisa, aren't I not? Yes, I mean, you are. Yes, you are. But, but uh, mm -hmm. you are the process, actually. It's not you making it. It's, it's you're actually self-assembling those proto-conscious qualia and putting them together to make, to make the frame. I mean, and that's happening, I mean, then our, our, the microtubule is conscious. For all intents and purposes, it's conscious. Well, not one microtube. You need this whole the, this whole collapse is conscious. It's a process of fundamental space-time geometry. Well, you need well you need that much to get to our level of consciousness, right? But I mean, wouldn't the it, isn't it happening then as well on the on the microtubule level? Isn't it conscious? At least I mean, it's making a decision, right? The, mito, the, the, the microtubule is making it's producing a quantum computation, and then the ag the aggregate of all of those computations is what is producing. Our, our sensation, our, our it, well, it's experience, kind of a, right? It's kind of an all or none phenomenon in that objective, because of this threshold phenomenon, you only have collapse when you, meet, when you reach threshold. If you, okay. if you decohere before, that's not conscious. You have to reach this threshold. So one, one microtubule cannot reach that threshold, not produce only if that it, threshold. Only if it was isolated for years. Okay, right, but, but in the splits, in the microsecond that it does you need, create a you thought. Need, uh, you need, you know, billions. <laughs> Or you need, uh, actually I can tell you how many you need for uh, roughly, we calculated for a uh, 40 hertz, you need something like uh, 10 to the 10th tubulins, uh, tubulins being the protein subunits of microtubules, so that's uh, a billion, 10 billion tubulins per conscious event. Cool. So in, in an actual quantum is, is the no, the whole itself? thing is one. Is this kind of like one? So, the, so the, the 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 individual tubulin never is um, uh, devoid of the interference to be able to do its own computation. It would have to. Be, it would have to be isolated for years for just one. But if you put them all together, you reach. You know, you, you increase the e. You increase the amount of superposition, so you reach threshold fairly quickly. So you can reach it within 25 milliseconds. If you left one tubulin by itself, it would take you know uh, 10 years or something like that, and then it would be a very low intensity experience, because the e is also related to the intensity of the experience. So, for example, if you're excited, if if somebody scares you or or enchants you or something like that, mm -hmm. the quantum superposition builds up more quickly. Okay. So why does our does our brain marshal more, more inputs? More inputs, and uh, you just reach. It just you get excited and you reach threshold more quickly, so that the height. Uh, and then you reach collapse, and then you do it again and again. So two things happen. The, the intensity is greater, and you have more events per time. So you have more intense experience, and they're happening more frequently. Do we need more microtubules to, to yes. be active in that yes. then? Yes. So basically more of our brain is active yes. during that exciting excitement moment. Exactly. And so we have more, we have more computers basically marshaled to, to solve the you know, uh, uh, fight or flee equation. Yeah. Okay. Or enchantment, or whatever it is, something okay. good, hopefully. Right. And in fact, plus you're having more events per time, which means that your inner time is faster and the outer world is slower. Do quantum do quantum computers operate at different speeds, though, at different times? Don't they don't they always operate at the same? Well, technological quantum computers have a clock time, but in but and and the microtubules within within those conscious events may have the same, you know, fast ten to the thirteenth. Uh, second per second clock time, but they're going to reach threshold quicker. So the the conscious events are going to be more intense and happen more often. How and, how do they reach threshold quicker though? Unless they're using, I mean each because there's more of them. So no, you, no, that I'm just going to the singular micro micro tubulin. It it how, how does it it's how does it produce more computations and less computations when it's 
in, in the quantum state, it should be producing the same. Because there are more of them. 